Today in the lab, pregnancy brain, medical condition or myth? Now we have no trouble remembering who makes the best baby gear in the world, it's Baby Bjorn. Fabulous design and fabulous safety, Baby Bjorn. So pregnancy brain is one of those things that people discuss anecdotally so often that we just accept that it's a medical side effect of pregnancy, but is it? To find out, we interviewed Dr. Keith Kessler, he's an Austin psychiatrist and brain chemistry expert. Yeah, with, with better neuroimaging techniques, we're able now to see in real time what the effects are of different phases of life. And what they found in a study in Canada was that um, there's a diminishment in the volume of the brain of about 4%. In particular, there's a, a diminishment in the volume of the hippocampus, which is an area that's responsible for new memories and for spatial relationships. It would seem logical that if that's shrinking, then it's not as effective, and that would account then for you know, uh, people, you know, women forgetting how they get to the grocery store, losing um, losing track of where they are even in their own neighborhoods and forgetting what the name of their kid is. Uh, laboratory studies with, with animals and with rats, they're finding that many of the things the women have been complaining about can be reproduced in the lab. The brain shrinks, but with the flooding of all of these hormones in the brain of progesterone particularly, but also estrogen, it seems that the progesterone actually helps increase overall, increases uh, nerve growth in the deep portions of the brain that are protective later for dementia with women. There may be some benefits over the long term. They've done studies with, um, with pregnant women and with women that have never had children. And they've followed them over time and have found that there may actually be an improvement in overall cognitive function in a woman because of having been pregnant. Biting your tongue, being patient, and writing everything down much like a contract so that everybody remembers what was talked about. So in some ways, it's like most things in a relationship, it's infusing a lot of humor into it. Saying this is all in your head, not a very good strategy? Not good unless you want to sleep on the front porch. I think of it as being sort of like occupied hard drive space and, and if you've got all these concerns and worries, particularly with a first baby, you're going to lose track of other less important things. I wonder if actually mommy brain becomes less and less severe with each successive baby. No, 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 no. It gets worse. It gets worse. Because there's more stuff to think about. First baby, you're focused on the baby. You have one baby to take care of. That's it. Third baby, you've got two kids to take care of and a new baby. My wife, the past couple of months, been putting the powdered sugar in the freezer and the ice cream in the pantry, and ice cream doesn't go in the pantry. That's pretty conclusive evidence. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that actually a pregnancy child brain gets worse after the kid is born. Mm -hmm. You know, Bill Cosby used to say that kids all have brain damage, but I think he got it exactly wrong. Kids cause brain damage. Oh. And I think it's quantifiable. I think you can find parallels. For example, one kid, what? 10 points off your IQ. Yeah. Two kids, same as like early stage uh, Alzheimer's, kind of like Ron Reagan when he was in office. Mm -hmm. Sort of third, three kids, that's mm -hmm. definitely spongiform encephalitis. Four kids, lobotomy. Is that why I drool a lot? Probably so. Yeah. You know what? This is all for the lab this week. We want to thank you for joining us. We want to thank our sponsors, Baby Bjorn. Oh. You don't want to forget this. No. no matter what, no matter where you go, no matter where you are with your kid, remember, Baby Bjorn, best designed products on the market. Adds IQ points. We'll see you next time here in the lab.